Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of 7 Minute AE Tutorials where you learn tips, tricks, and shortcuts in 7 minutes or less. No BS, just AE. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create 3D shapes with no third-party plugins, meaning we will only be using what's natively available in After Effects. There's a lot to get through, so let's dive right in. Layer New Solid, this blue-gray right here is just fine, and then let's make that 3D. We'll call this Floor. Let's Control D that and we'll call this wall. Okay, let's go ahead and layer new, add in a camera, and then layer new, add in a null object, make that 3D, and let's parent our camera to the null object. I'm gonna call this null object camera control, just to keep things more organized, and also like to highlight both of these layers and give them the same color. Highlight floor, R to bring up our rotation, and we're gonna rotate on the X axis 90 degrees so that way it's laying flat. And let's just pull this down. So if you just right click in this area next to your comp viewer and select new viewer, you'll get a secondary viewer over here. So if you see right here on our left, we have active camera chosen. Whenever I'm doing 3D, I like to set this one to custom view one. We need to push our wall back a little bit. So highlight wall. And let's just push that back in Z space. And now see if you grab your camera orbit tool, you can actually kind of orbit around here to get an idea of how this is gonna look. And this won't affect the camera positioning of your active cameras. Remember, this is only on the custom view. So think of the panel on the right more as just a viewer. Okay, now let's start to create some 3D objects. Layer, new, shape layer. Let's add an ellipse. And then we're gonna add a fill. I'm gonna change this fill color. I'm gonna make this layer 3D. If you go up to Composition, Composition Settings, go to your 3D renderer, and you wanna make sure you have Cinema 4D selected for your renderer. It usually defaults to Classic 3D, so you wanna set it to Cinema 4D. And we'll just click OK. So now let's bring up our position and our rotation for the shape layer, and you wanna rotate on the X axis 90 degrees so that way it's flat. If you come down here to your geometry options, you have this option for extrusion depth. And as you begin to increase it, you can see that we're getting exactly what we want. We're getting this 3D object. And let's grab our camera orbit tool again and go over to this right viewer and see, you can see how this object is actually 3D. It's going to extrude from the face backwards. So see, we rotated this 90 degrees. Let me put this rotation back to zero, and then I'm going to orbit around this way. Now watch as I'm adjusting the extrusion depth. It's extruding backwards. So it's going to extrude from the face back. There are no negative values, so you can't go in the opposite direction. Let's put our X rotation back to 90 degrees. Let's go up to Layer, New, Light, and we'll make this a point light. We do want to cast shadows. I've set my shadow darkness to 50% and diffuse to 10 and click OK. Let's play with our light setting a little bit. Camera control, click P and then we'll push in here. And so now let's bring our shape layer here down to the floor. Your 3D objects are not going to cast shadows by default. So you have to set that. The way you do that is go into your shape layer and you open it up come down here to material options and just click your cast shadows on. And now you can see we have a shadow here. Okay, and now see we can set this right viewer over here, change it from custom view to front, just to make sure we're actually on the floor. See this red line here is our floor. So let's pull this shape layer down so it sits right on top. Let's go back to our geometry options and let's increase this say to 400. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a tilt on my camera control for right now so that way I can kind of get an idea of how this is gonna look from the top view. Hit S on our floor and let's unlink this scale and just really crank this out wide, say to maybe 2000. Same thing with the wall, S unlink and make this first value 2000. Okay, so let's go to about two seconds and we're gonna put a keyframe for this extrusion depth. Go back to the beginning of our timeline here and make the extrusion depth zero. So that's the effect that we want to get right there. Shape layer one highlighted, control D to duplicate. So let's set our position on shape layer one is at 960. So for shape layer two, let's make that 1080. So we increase it by 120 pixels to the right. 
hit U to bring up our keyframes, and then we'll just make this a little bit shorter, so maybe 350, and then let's change the color, maybe to like an orange. Duplicate shape layer two. Position, we're gonna add 120, so that's gonna make that 1200. Change the color to maybe green, and hit U to bring up our keyframe, and let's make this 250. And then let's duplicate it one more time, and we're gonna go forward 120 pixels, so 1320. And then just make this any other color, let's say something like a blue. Hit U to bring up our keyframe, and we'll make this 150. So just like that. Okay, so now I wanna put some text in here, and also I want it to be 3D, so Control T for text. And let's just type the word graph. And then I'm gonna make this text color white, and let's make this 3D. And now let's just kind of go to the end of this animation and kind of see how it's going to look. And again, this is when that right viewer comes in handy. You can get a, a much more accurate idea of where everything is. Okay, so now let's open up our graph layer. Let's change our material options to cast shadows on. And then we're going to extrude this. If you come down to geometry options, you'll see that you have bevel style, angular, concave, convex. You also have bevel depth. So let's set this to angular. And as you increase your bevel depth, you can see the effect that that's giving you. And then this is concave. So have a little bit of a different bevel look. You see it has those ridges. Convex looks more like that. So good bevel depth is around three. So just kind of play around with these settings until you see what you like, what works good for your style. And actually I'm gonna change the color of my text. Shall make it more of an orange. Change this orange color here, uh, maybe something like a purple. So just set this about where you want it to be. I don't really need this custom view on the right anymore. I always like to start with my my end position, so like where I want this animation to end. So maybe something kind of like that. I'm gonna set my on camera control. I'm gonna set my position and my X rotation keyframes. That's my end spot. So then I want it to start at like a more of a dramatic angle and further away. And let me make my floor a little bit longer as well. So that way we have more room to play with here. This just all depends on the look that you're going for. So now we can bring up all these keyframes by selecting U. Highlight them all, right click, keyframe assistant, ease in. And then let's go to our graph editor. Just pull all of these handles to the left. So that way it's going to come in fast and then slow to a stop. So something kind of like that. And since this is a text layer, we can add plugins and scripts to it. So if hit your left bracket to bring over the beginning of your layer, as you can see, graph is not going to start here. Go over to effects and presets and type in scale, scale up word. So let's just double click that to apply the script. Hit U to bring up our keyframes. Then let's open up this animator and your range selector. And then let's open up this advanced tab. So let's change words based on words to based on characters. That way it will scale up each character one at a time. I'm just gonna loop this area to make sure this is the look I'm going for. You can make any shape in any text 3D, super easy. Just remember in your composition settings, you wanna make sure that your 3D renderer is set to Cinema 4D. To get shadows, you need to make sure you add a light. Make sure that light is set to cast shadows. And then whenever you set your layers to 3D, Remember, you have to go to your material options and cast shadows on because they will default to off. I hope this helped you out. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe. I put a link to the project file in the description below, and I'd love to get your feedback about this lesson. Reach out to me on YouTube or Facebook, or shoot me an email with your suggestions about any topic you'd like to see covered, or just to talk about motion graphic design in general. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.